All right, just a quick video answering a common Calvinistic proof text they use to teach uh, total inability. And just like all other Calvinist proof texts, it is eisegesis. They're ripping it out of context. They're, they're inserting their own doctrine into the text because they have this pre-commitment to TULIP. So they will reinterpret scriptures uh, around TULIP. They will insert TULIP doctrine into the verses when it says nothing of the kind. And total inability and total depravity is one such doctrine that is not found in the text. If you read the totality of it, they'll take verses out of context and insert it in there. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 to 3 is a verse I'm addressing. It's a common verse they'll use. And I need to say this too. I am not a Pelagian. I am not an Arminian. Okay? It's a false dichotomy. See, Calvinists regularly commit the fallacy of the false dichotomy and the fallacy of the false dilemma. Uh, neither Calvinism nor Pelagianism are scriptural. Now, they have some aspects of it that, that partly line up with scripture. But uh, as doctrines, they're false. Okay? Neither one of them is scriptural. So I'm not... Arminian and I'm not Pelagian, okay? Both are false doctrines. But total inability is not the same thing as having a sinful flesh. See, Calvinists redefine original sin with their preferred definitions. They'll redefine original sin to mean total inability and total depravity. When the verses they use, you know, because I've done, I've, I, I know the verses they use. Nothing of the kind is taught in the verses. So, but here's one such example of a verse they'll use. It's Ephesians 2 verse 1 to 3, and you're going to see just their eisegesis of this text, okay? It's a good verse that proves sinful flesh, a sinful nature, okay? It refutes the Pelagians, but it does not prove total depravity or total inability, okay? Let's actually look at the text. Ephesians 2, verse 1 to 3, and you have the quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past, okay, time past, you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh and the children of disobedience, among whom we all had our conversation in times past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and who were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Notice the past tense wording, in times past, who were by nature the children of wrath, okay? Uh, you're no longer a child of wrath if you're saved. I need to just point that out, okay? Um, you're a child of wrath because if you're unsaved, you're going to get God's wrath. That's just how it works. Okay. Now, let me just point some things out because this is eisegesis when they try to use this to, to teach total inability. The passage says nothing about the sinner being totally unable to believe by his own free will. And by the way, free will appears 17 times in Scripture. However, sovereignty appears none. Zero times in the King James Bible. But yeah, the passage says nothing at all about the sinner being totally unable to believe. Nothing about the condition of his will in regards to accepting or rejecting the gospel is taught in this text. You know, they're, they're just reading their own theology into there with their pre-commitment to Tula. Uh, it talks about the sinner being dead in trespasses and sin. They walk according to the course of this world. Okay? Um, if you're lost, that's what you do. Okay? You're a child of disobedience. You're, you're a child of the devil. You know? Where is there anything about total inability? It's just describing your lost condition. Okay? Nowhere is total inability or total depravity or, you know, no ability to accept or reject Christ, or this hardcore determinism they believe in, uh, is taught explicitly or even implicitly in this text, okay? And, again, you know, this is not the same thing as having sinful flesh, okay? Because the Pelagians will deny sinful flesh. That's wrong, too. That's heresy as well, okay? Neither one is scriptural. But the thing about the Calvinist total depravity is they go beyond what the scriptures teach, Okay? And again, you see them inserting this doctrine into the text. Nowhere is the ability of the sinner taught in the text or its context. It's describing your lost past condition. And by the way, can a lost person do good? Okay? Now, in regards to salvation, no one can do good to earn salvation. But can they do good in the sense of avoiding sin and doing acts that are holy? Yes, they can. Okay? Uh, before you call me a Pelagian, what saith the scriptures? Okay, Because Calvinists, they'll profess sola scriptura all day long, but they can never actually handle the, the totality of it. Whenever they hear, when, if they hear me say that, they'll say, oh, you're, you're a Pelagian, you're, you're a semi-Pelagian, that's one I've gotten. Okay, you can call me whatever you want. What saith the scriptures? Okay, Can a lost man do good in the sense of avoiding sin? Yes, they can. Romans 2, verse 14 and 15. For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law are a law unto themselves, which show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts the meanwhile, either sorry, accusing or else excusing one another. Okay, By nature. 
Okay? You have a sinful nature. You're prone to sin. But that does not mean total inability to do anything good. Calvinists are inserting doctrine into the text. This verse is a direct refutation of that. Do by nature the things contained in the law. And also you can read Romans 1 verse 26 to 27. It talks about how homosexuality, they do that which is against nature. How does that line up with total depravity? If you can only sin before you're, if, if you're not elect, you know, what do you do with that? They can't. Hence why you quote these verses at them and they won't address them. I've done that with Calvinists. They will not address it because they can't. And also, if you want to see an example of this, uh, the, the, the uh, law being in your heart, you can read Genesis 20, verse 1 to 9, where a pagan king, Abimelech, knows that adultery is wrong. You know, he knows it because why? The law is in his heart. So Calvinists are unable to deal with the, the uh, whole of scripture. They will cherry pick verses and just insert, you know, fallaciously just insert all these false doctrines into the text. Read the scriptures. It says nothing of the kind. So anyway, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Don't be deceived by Calvinism. Goodbye. Thank you.